Okay, first of all, we just wanted to welcome everyone. Um, this is presentation number three in a series of four that our cancer control staff at American Cancer Society um, have been hosting for staff, volunteers, board members, just around the mission programming that we're focusing our efforts on here in Michigan. And so today we're gonna be talking about our campaign called Mission HPV Cancer Free. I'm presenting today with Beth Rizzo, who is a health systems manager for state and primary care. And my name is Abby Moeller, and I am senior manager of state and primary care systems. So why should ACS focus on HPV? Um, well, first thing is that we have a vaccine that prevents cancers. And so many times people will come up and say, um, you know, if there was a vaccine that prevented breast cancer, people would be lined up around the corner. And so we do actually have a va vaccine that prevents cancer, and it is the HPV vaccination. Um, also, we really need to make sure that we're vaccinating more kids. A little bit later in the presentation, we'll go over some data around where we're at in Michigan as far as getting kids vaccinated, but there is definitely opportunity to get more kids vaccinated. Success is achievable. Um, we've seen it in other countries where their vaccination rates were very high early on that it really is having an impact on uh, the prevalence of cancers that are caused by HPV vaccination or by HPV infections. And then cancer and immunization really need to work together. So right now we're working mostly in the space with physicians on screenings and with hospitals on making sure that people are getting the best treatment. But this gives us a really good opportunity to work with another department and immunizations to um, get these vaccination rates up. So together, we know that we really can prevent cancer. Uh, we have 4,500 staff members and 1.5 million volunteers. And so us spreading the word about the HPV vaccination being cancer prevention, promoting and supporting vaccinations, will really will have a huge impact. Um, right now, we know that more than 31,000 cases of HPV-related cancers are being di diagnosed every year, and those could be prevented. So looking at HPV infection, um, one thing to note is that it is very, very prevalent and very, um, it's very easy to get. And so not all HPV infections will lead to cancers. However, it is very susceptible and most people won't ever know that they've been infected, but it is estimated that about 79 million Americans are currently walking around that are infected. About 14 million new infections per year are reported in the US, and they're most common in people in their teens and early 20s. So HPV infections are very, very uh, popular and, and we're all susceptible to them. When we're looking at those that are diagnosed with cancer caused by HPV virus, every year in the US, 30,700 people are diagnosed with a cancer that is caused by HPV. And that means one case every 20 minutes. So as you're sitting here through this presentation, it's highly likely that one more person is being diagnosed. When we look at the cancers that are caused by HPV, um, you look at men and women. Um, women are diagnosed at about 19,000 and men 11,000 per 100,000 people. And so um, when you look at the most popular ones in women, it's mostly cervical cancer. And then in men, it's oropharynx, and that is head and neck cancer. So you'll see those um, on the rise, and it's also um, proving that it's so important for both boys and girls to be vaccinated. So when you look at this chart, at the bottom are where we're seeing the vaccination coverage rates um, separated out by boys and girls. Um, keeping in mind that this is 13 to 17 years because this is the actual completion rate and we wanna make sure that 
uh, adolescents are completed by age 13. But when you look at the boys, they're being vaccinated in Michigan at about 34 percent and in the U.S. at 37 percent. So we're a little bit short there. Um, when you're looking at girls in Michigan, we're vaccinating at about 55 percent, where in the U.S. it's 49.5 percent. So looking at those numbers, though, there is a huge opportunity, like I said before, to get many more boys and girls vaccinated. So when we're talking about our goal um, and keeping in mind the rates that we're at currently, we would like to see as, nation, as a nation, the HPV vaccination rates for teen, teen, preteens at least 80% by June 8, 2026. And that date is significant because it's the 20 year anniversary of when the FDA approved the first HPV vaccination. And so what we really want to do is mobilize parents, volunteers, providers and health or healthcare organizations to help us to meet that goal. And we have some really great strategies to do that. And I'm going to turn it over to Beth to go through those with you. Hold on, I have one more. I'm going to go through the four key campaign messages and then I'm going to turn over to Beth. So there are four messages. And if you don't walk away with anything else from this presentation, these are the four things that we really want you to understand. And so the first one is that HPV vaccination is cancer prevention. That is like the number one message that we want to make sure that everybody knows. Um, number two is that the vaccine is both safe and effective. It works and it really is safe. And Beth is going to get into a little bit more detail of that. The HPV vaccination is for boys and girls. We saw how it's causing cancer in both men and women. So the HPV vaccination really needs to be administered to both boys and girls. And that the, it's best when given at ages 11 and 12. That's really when the immune response is best. And it's also when uh, preteens are due for two other vaccines. So it's a perfect time at ages 11 and 12 to get kids vaccinated. Great. Thank you, Abby. So like Abby said, we have some strategies for how to put those messages into action. And that's what we want to um, really work with our community members on doing is getting getting those messages and putting them into action. Um, around local areas. So there are five different strategies that ACS has identified. The first one is strengthening our provider recommendations. How do we do that? We as staff and volunteers can be having discussions with our primary care physicians, um, other family physicians, talking to them about the HPV vaccine. Um, but also what we know from the research is that when providers are not making strong recommendations for the HPV vaccine, vaccine, parents are not necessarily getting it or having their children take it. But when parents receive strong recommendations for a vaccine, whether it's for HPV or meningococcal or anything else, they're much more likely to get that vaccine. The second strategy is activating our partners and our stakeholders. Um, partners and stakeholders include not only volunteers in our community, but also those primary care facilities, FQHCs, um, research partners, et cetera, that we work with on a daily basis um, and helping improve their knowledge of the HPV vaccine and just how important it is to preventing cancer and their outreach to additional community members. How do we get those stakeholders involved? We have to know our data, and that's our third strategy. Not only do we need to know our data, but we need to make sure that we're tracking that data on a regular basis and looking in at the trends um, that we're seeing across our populations. Um, the fourth then strategy is making sure that we use that data and the support from our stakeholders to really implement evidence-based interventions and system changes. Um, this does not mean we have to recreate the wheel. There are a lot of evidence-based practices out there already that we can take and implement into our communities. And by working together with our stakeholders, um, we can improve how those strategies or those interventions, I should say, are being implemented in areas of key concern. And then lastly, and possibly most importantly, is increasing parental knowledge around HPV vaccination, its safety, 
and its efficacy. Okay, um, so when do we get the vaccine? So this is a great slide. We actually have it as a tool that we can utilize with our various stakeholders. It is able to be co-branded as well, and it really showcases at a quick glance what that age range is for when we can get our children vaccinated. Kids can be vaccinated as early as nine years old. Um, and we can have that series completed up through age 26. The area that's been circled in red is really that key area. And Abby's already mentioned this a couple of times before, but the critical time period to get that vaccination for HPV done is during ages 11 and 12. There are a couple of reasons for this. First and foremost, the research has shown that our immune system responds better to the vaccine at these younger ages, um, really between nine and about 13. What we wanna make sure is happening is that kids are getting the vaccine, vaccine, the full series of the vaccine before age 13. And since adolescents go in for two other vaccines between the ages of 11 and 12, that makes this time period an ideal time period for the HPV vaccine as well. So that when adolescents go in to see their doctor and they're getting their Tdap and meningococcal uh, vaccine, they're also then getting their HPV vaccine. Next slide. Um, so what is the first, what does the series really look like? So when the vaccine is taken at the appropriate timeline, ages 11 to 12, there are two doses that each child needs to, be, needs to receive. The first dose can be taken during either of those age ranges, um, 11 or 12 years, and that second dose then needs to be given between six and 12 months after that first dose. Now there are a couple scenarios where a third dose may be needed. The first scenario is if that um, first dose was given to an adolescent at or after the age of 15. In that scenario, those individuals will need to have three doses for the vaccine to be fully effective. The second scenario is if um, the first dose was given at the appropriate time range, maybe, but that second dose might have been given before the 15th birthday, but it was done so within five months or less from that first dose. In that case, we're gonna need to give that additional third dose to be certain that the vaccine is working efficiently. And then the last scenario, scenario is for those individuals who already have weakened immune systems. Um, that's a scenario for where those individuals will need to receive three different doses regardless of their age. So, Take home point here. The HPV vaccination is safe. Studies have been finding not only before it was approved in the US for use, but also since then that the vaccine has had no serious side effects. And in fact, the CDC and the FDA continue to monitor and evaluate the safety of all vaccines given, and that does include the HPV vaccine. So as we continue to increase rates across our communities, We'll continue to get additional data, which would just support the additional, the current findings that this vaccine is extremely safe for your youth. Um, and then finally, making sure that our clinicians are reassuring parents who may have concerns about HPV safety, HPV vaccination safety, I should say, that it is in fact safe and all the studies have shown um, that, that there have been no significant problems with it. Not only is the vaccine safe, but it is also effective, very in fact, effective in fact. We can actually look at it at three different stages. Within the early stage, which would be within a couple of years of having received the full vaccine series, we've already seen the prevalence of HPV diagnoses and genital warts decrease at a significant rate. Then there's kind of a mid-range outcome period. And that could be from a few years to even a decade or so. 
And that's where we have already seen the reduction of precancerous status among um, individuals who have received this vaccine already. And then that third stage is really what we're very excited about is the significant reduction of HPV associated cancers being diagnosed among this population. So some of you might be asking or thinking about friends or family that would be asking, yeah, but how effective is this really? Well, there have been a number of studies out there looking at the efficacy of this vaccine. And in fact, in a review of over 20 studies um, across countries with high vaccination coverage rates for HPV, when we say high vaccination coverage rates right now, we're talking about greater than 50% are being fully vaccinated. Um, and this is among 13 to 19 year olds who completed the vaccine within the duration they should have. We have already seen a 68% decrease in the prevalence of the HPV 16 and 18 strains. What's really unique about these strains is they are the most um, significantly associated with HPV associated cancers. And we're already seeing a 68% decrease and diagnosis of these strains among this population. Additionally, we're also seeing over 60% decrease in uh, genital warts among the same age group. There's also a well-documented evidence of herd immunity, which basically means that when individuals, the more individuals who get vaccinated, um, they're also creating this bubble of safety for those individuals who, for very specific medical reasons, cannot receive the vaccine. And that is a small population, but it's important to know that that herd immunity is really also quite effective. And we're also seeing evidence of cross protection against other types of HPV strains. So some of the key questions we continue to have from parents um, across backgrounds and regions, et cetera, is, is this vaccine safe and is it really effective? So what we want to, to provide to everyone on the call today is um, are a couple of quick answers we can provide individuals with questions like these that are clear, concise, and really help the parent or individual feel confident in our response. So when somebody asks us, is this vaccine safe? One way to respond is acknowledging that I know there are stories in the media, both on TV and online about vaccines. But I want you to know that that HPV vaccine has been carefully studied for many years by medical and scientific experts. And all of these studies continue to show that the vaccine is safe. When you're asked about its effectiveness, it's important to, again, reiterate that there are ongoing studies that continue to monitor the HP vaccinations and how effective they are within our populations. And all of those studies continue to show that the vaccination is working very well. We've seen HPV infections, genital warts, and cervical precancers in young people decrease in prevalence over the years since the vaccine has become available. So what can you do right now? One of the most important things that any one of us can do today is become a community champion or recruit a community champion. But what is a community champion? These are individuals who are willing to volunteer some of their time to work with community members who have um, adolescents or maybe even working with parents of younger children, maybe older children around the ages of seven or eight or nine, who are getting to that point where the vaccine would be appropriate to have and talking to them about that safety and efficacy of the HPV vaccination. Um, this might be a community member who's actively involved in your PTA organization, or if there are some sports groups, sports teams, or faith-based groups, or um, STEM groups that parents have older children and young adolescents involved in. Those would be great avenues to have these discussions. What else can you do? 
we can promote the idea of community panels on HPV vaccinations. Currently, ACS is promoting and implementing um, community panels all over, talking about the HPV vaccination and its importance, its importance in preventing cancer. So if you live in an area where ACS is partnering with someone to host a community panel, make sure you're letting other parents know about it, other community members know about it. If you're living in an area where there isn't a community panel already established, or to your knowledge, there is not one, reach out to one of your ACS staff members and let them know that there is interest in that area. Let us know what area you're looking at and perhaps you could help us plan one of those community panels. Um, while it would be great for you to reach out to one of us who's working in cancer control directly, even working, you know, just connecting with somebody who's working at ACS, they can always connect you to one of our cancer control staff members to help you with that process. And then if you hear about a community panel in your area, attend it ask some questions, um, help spread the word about it. And then lastly, we want you to talk to your physicians. Not only do we want you to talk to your physicians about the vaccine and how it's being implemented in the, um, in the system that you're in or the community that you're in, but when you do identify or see a physician that's doing a great job of providing strong recommendations to their patients, thank that physician, thank that medical provider, that nurse practitioner, that physician's assistant for making that strong recommendation and helping us attack cancer and prevent um, cancer, future cancers from occurring by getting the vaccine today. Um, and then of course, those four messages that Abby mentioned before are really those take home messages we want you all to remember and to continue sharing with other parents in your neighborhoods. And those are that HPV vaccination is cancer prevention, first and foremost. It is safe and effective. It is for both boys and for girls. And it is a series best given and completed before age 13. So before we open it up to questions, uh, we have also provided a link here for you in case you want to look around at some of the other um, information available. It's through our hpvroundtable.org. Um, they have a full resource library with a lot of great information out there. Um, otherwise, we would like to open it up to questions. Good, and we do also welcome, we are going to be posting this to YouTube. So if you are watching or listening to this, um, this presentation, but that it's not live, please feel free to reach out to um, myself or Beth with any questions that you have or comment below uh, the video itself. Um, we'll be posting it onto YouTube. So there is areas for comments. So we will keep our eyes on those to be able to answer any questions that you have for anyone who is not uh, listening to this live. So if there are no questions, uh, we thank you all for listening and um, hope that you have found this very informative and helpful. And we hope you all have a great evening.